You've probably heard it before. Taxes are inherently political. We're going to take that head on in this part of the module, trying to define the impossible. A good tax. With this in mind, we're going to cover a series of videos on this topic, and I assure you, although I have political inclinations, I in no way anticipate setting forth a political dogma that I expect you to follow. Instead, I will provide what almost all Americans agree are the characteristics that would make one type of tax perhaps better than another. In actuality, most of us treat taxes a bit like a boat. Everyone loves a boat, but few of us want to pay to maintain it, which is why our favorite boat is our friend's boat. Same is true for taxes. We like many of the goods and services taxes provide, but few want to pay more than their fair share and would generally be happier if our neighbor paid instead. If this becomes a topic of interest to you, I provided a short list of some of the better reads on tax policy. Every American would benefit from reading at least one of these, if not all. However, for this class, they're totally optional. No exam, quiz, or any other assessment material will be drawn from them. They're a little bit like the ability to swim. Not required for this course, but not a bad idea for life. Okay, on with the show. Are you ready? The five characteristics of a good tax, in no particular order, are sufficiency, fairness, certainty, convenience, and economy. Here's a quick overview of each. Take a moment to read them. I've managed a separate video for the first two, then crammed the last three into one, which means that this video is over. Short and sweet. This brings us to the end of video 1F on the characteristics of a good tax. Our next video is on the first characteristic, sufficiency. Thanks for watching. It took nearly one year into the Trump administration, but Republicans in Congress are on the verge of giving the president his first big legislative win, passing a tax reform package in the House, mostly along party lines. This is a day I've been looking forward to for a long time. House Speaker Paul Ryan acknowledged the tax cut plan has yet to win over the public, but blamed others for that. Look, when you have a sling fest, a mud fest on TV, when pundits are slamming each other about this tax bill before it passes, that's what's going to happen. A new CNN poll finds just one third of Americans favor the tax plan, with two thirds saying it will benefit the wealthy instead of the middle class. Most Americans also believe the president's vast real estate empire will prosper too, despite his denials. This is going to cost me a fortune, this thing. Believe me. Uh, that was false, right? No, because uh, on the personal side, this actually could impact the president uh, in a large way. And how would balance out corporate versus personal if he's going to come out? I'm not ahead. sure if he's done a side by side, but I know that there are uh, a number of provisions that would negatively impact the president personally. Uh, and so we contend that those comments are still very consistent. Part of the problem for the president is that he's breaking promises he made on the campaign trail to make wealthy hedge fund managers pay more. The hedge fund guys are getting away with murder. They're making a tremendous amount of money. They have to pay tax. But a tax break Taylor made for the hedge fund set known 51. as carried interest was saved. GOP leaders don't want to talk about that. And look, carried interest, we can talk about that for the next hour if you'd like. But for, for most Americans, they could care less about that. Heading into next year's midterm elections, the White House isn't worried about the consequences. The president is betting the tax cuts will add to the gains on Wall Street, touting this year's stock market performance on Twitter. But as a candidate, Mr. Trump sounded the alarm over what he saw as a market bubble. Remember the word bubble. You heard it here first. I mean, I don't want to sound rude, but I hope if it explodes, it's going to be now rather than two months into another administration. Democrats complain Republicans wrote the tax bill under the cover of darkness, accusing some in the GOP, like Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, of changing their votes after sweeteners were added to the package. Corker rejected that. Look, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, the way this place has become, and, and uh, you know, obviously it's... Uh, you know, sort of assassination, if you will, but it's just not true. 
As for the president, he's defending another victory he frequently cites, his decision to tap Neil Gorsuch for the Supreme Court. Mr. Trump is slamming reports that he wanted to rescind his selection of Gorsuch after the judge criticized the president, calling the story fake news, adding he never even wavered. We the people. But there is one bit of fake news the president may welcome, as in the artificial version of Mr. Trump added to Disney's Hall of Presidents, though this robot appears to be all talk, no tweets. Now, as for the president benefiting from the tax cuts that were just passed in the House, Mr. Trump could settle the issue once and for all and release his tax returns. The press secretary said the president won't do that while he is under audit. They've used that excuse many times before. But the fact is, Wolf, the president could release those tax returns anyway. There is nothing preventing him from doing that. Uh, those 12 House Republicans we just mentioned who voted no uh, just about a half an hour ago, one of those 12 is here and joins us now. Republican Congressman Representative Leonard Lance of New Jersey joining us now in his first interview since the vote. So glad you chose us here on Fox Business. Uh, what was behind your no vote, sir? Uh, I favor the continued deductibility, Liz, of state and local taxes. It has been in our tax code since 1913. It's very important to New Jersey, the state I represent. It's a matter of federalism, and I don't think we should be paying taxes on taxes. So I, I guess that uh, Speaker Paul Ryan's speech of this is our moment did not sway you? Uh, I think there are many uh, good portions in the bill, uh, uh, making the standard deduction for families $24,000, doubling it, uh, protecting students, uh, those with high uh, medical expenses. I favor those provisions. But salt is important to New Jersey. Also, Liz, I tend to be a deficit hawk, and uh, I don't favor increasing the national uh, debt. This is the question. Uh, what happened to all of the uh, fiscal hawks that used to be in the conservative Republican groups? Because we do know that it will initially add to the deficit. And, and OK, we get that. There is this belief on behalf of President Trump and Stephen Mnuchin that eventually the growth from these tax cuts will be so vibrant and so robust that it will pay for itself. Do you believe that? Uh, I, I hope that's the case, but I'm not sure that will be the case. And I'm a deficit hawk, and so I want to make sure that we don't add to the debt for the sake of our children. Okay, I understand that, but there are others from states that do not uh, deduct as much of their state and local taxes because their taxes in their states are not as high. But they are the ones who are saying, when will high state taxes like uh, high tax states like New Jersey, New York, California become more responsible about cutting taxes in their state? Uh, <clears throat> I think we should not raise taxes in New Jersey, and our new, dem new Democratic governor may want to raise taxes, uh, income taxes at the state level, and I'm opposed to that. However, New Jersey is not a receiving state, Liz. We're a sending state. We send a lot more revenue to Washington than we receive back, and I don't want to make uh, that situation worse. Uh, I don't want to exacerbate that situation. Well, I, uh, I, re I remind all of my colleagues here on Capitol Hill that New Jersey sends more money to Washington than we receive We back. just saw that. That is a great point. Uh, I live in New Jersey, sir, so here I am. <laughs> I get this. New Jersey sends $31 billion more than it takes out uh, to, to the federal government. New York, even higher, 47.8. Let's call it $48 billion. Uh, they are net that they don't use as much as, as many of the other states who don't put in certainly as much. But nobody seems to understand that. And, and in the end, I'm just wondering, are you going to get disinvited from the, the karaoke Christmas parties that are happening on the Hill because you are one of the 12 who voted no? I mean, are you starting to feel any pressure? Uh, uh, quite the contrary. I believe that my views are the views uh, are the, the overwhelming majority of the people I serve, the views of the overwhelming majority of the people of New Jersey. And uh, I am a deficit hawk, and I have always been a deficit hawk, and I will continue to be one. Does it surprise you that this deductibility of the state and local taxes has been in the tax code since 1913? Okay, so they decided to eliminate that, or at least cap it. They decided to cap that. And yet, they decided to leave in much younger uh, different things within the tax code, such as carried interest. Uh, we didn't get answers yesterday from our Pennsylvania Republican that we had uh, in the interview, Mike Kelly. Uh, I need to see if there's an answer from you. Who got to the House and the Senate to, to make sure they kept their hands off this very low rate 
that billionaires in private equity pay? Was it the lobbyists? Did some of these guys who are friends with President Trump make personal phone calls? How is it possible that one minute the president on the campaign trail says, carried interest is going to be gone, it's not fair, my friends won't like it, and then suddenly radio silence, and these gentlemen on the screen, we love profits, we understand that, but they get to be treated so much better than even those making $200,000. These guys are paying a 20% tax rate. I uh, am not on the Ways and Means Committee, and so I, I don't know precisely how that occurred, but I agreed with what President Trump said on the campaign trail in that regard, and uh, I certainly think, uh, related to SALT, as you point out, it's been in the tax code since 1913, and I believe that it was even in the tax code during the administration of Abraham Lincoln when an income tax was imposed uh, mm. to uh, pay for the Civil War. And so historically, SALT has been part of uh, tax policy in this country, and we should continue to have the ability to deduct state and local taxes. And um, I hope that this might be revisited at some point in the future. Uh, but I voted as I did for that reason, and also because of uh, my being a deficit hawk. Before we go, we are about to see the lights turn off at the U.S. government uh, by 11:59:59 Friday night because our continuing resolution ends at that point. We need to pass something. What do you expect is going to happen? This as there is this pretty significant $81 billion disaster aid relief to help hurricane victims uh, that has just been floated yesterday. Um, we will pass a continuing resolution in the House. It will go to the Senate, Liz. The Senate may modify it, and then it will come back to the House. And I'm committed to voting to make sure that government remain open. And I'm certainly willing to consider disaster relief aid and, and other provisions as well. I do not want to shut down government. I think it's not in the best interest of the American people. Of course and not. certainly it's not in the best interest of our fighting men and women abroad, including those who are fighting to victory in the war against ISIS. I think the president has done a good job in that area, and I want to continue that progress, and that means we have to fund the government. Okay, so kicking that can down the road. That can is getting pretty beaten up, I have to tell you. Thank you so much, Representative. We appreciate it. Thank you. Merry Christmas and happy holidays Thank to you. Thank you so much. Leonard Lance is the congressman from New Jersey. The uh, 218 uh, margin has been cleared. There are 224 yeas, uh, 11 nays among the Republicans, and uh, not a single yay uh, from the Democratic side, uh, 187 nays. Uh, that means that this bill has the votes to carry, but as we pointed out earlier, it is not official. Uh, there can be some last-minute jockeying and uh, what they call pairing of votes uh, wouldn't really come into play here. Uh, but you got to wait for the gavel to come down. There's 49 there seconds left. Interesting. This, 11 this, day votes. On yeah, the, side. the salt Republican revote looks those are very the blue small. State, those have got to be the blue state yeah. Republicans. Yeah. It's a lot but smaller. See, at than least from what I, and we're going to wait for the gavel to tell mm -hmm. us what I don't understand about. I have not read the bill. Most of America has not read the bill. 99.9% .9 of the population has not read the bill, but yet they're they're commenting on it. Here's my issue, though. A lot of we know one. Read I'm going to be totally factual. <laughs> Fact: The bill cuts withholding tax rates mm -hmm. by a couple of percent across every income level and raises the income level at which those lower tax rates go. I'm not supporting the bill. I'm saying this is. Fact, bracket widening. News. Bracket widening. Why? Why are people so reluctant to believe they're not getting a tax cut? I think there's some percentage of people who just distrust the government and what's been said to them over time. I think there's some percentage of people that live in salt states and don't quite understand how this is all going to play out relative ah. to their taxes. And I think there's also been a lot of confusion. This thing has gone back and forth many times. Honestly, we polled December 10th through the 13th, I believe. What was the state of the tax bill versus the way it is now? You talk to congressmen who don't know what the brackets are, Brian. Why would you expect the American public to know what the brackets are? But the bill are? came out. This is unusual. The conference reported, in my opinion at least, a much better <clears throat> tax bill than the original in Senate In some House ways, bill. they got rid of some of the things that were the most objectionable. Particularly about small, the graduate I, students. Yes. And that was very important. The medical expenses, and the I think, were important. And the small business stuff is I, pretty I, darn good. I agree. Relative to what it was, I believe it to be a better bill. Now, I was talking to a lot of economists, Brian, 
who thought it was a terrible bill on the individual side at the same time while they supported some, if not the entire, corporate tax cut. And I think that, that, that really describes the economics community. They believe in the idea a of terrible, cutting corporate terrible taxes. for the individuals, but to the point where it's a detriment to the economy? Or is a net result because the business side is so good that it's still a positive? Let, let, me, let me explain the what economists look at this. I think Larry's point of view is, is, is widely shared, but not entirely shared in the sense that lower taxes are better. Simplified taxes, fewer taxes, fewer tax breaks. Economists love the efficiency of that. I think there's a return to the economy. I think most people agree the bill failed in that regard. It's still many deductions out there. Um, and there's still a very complicated tax system that has the government allocating resources in a lot of different ways. All it right. did well on the corporate tax side, not as well on the efficiency side that it could have provided. Let's listen, shall we? Have all members voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Does any member wish to change Speaker's gavel the House back to order. The votes are tallied there, 227 to 203 nay votes. We are awaiting now the official pronouncement from the speaker, from the chair. On this vote, the yeas are 227 and the nays are 203. The conference report is adopted without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. <laughs> and there goes the gavel falling to the floor as uh, Speaker Ryan uh, and the uh, members of his GOP caucus applaud the passage of the biggest tax cut and revision since 1986. I want to start off by thanking the American people, our constituents, for sending us here to do this work for them. This is one of the most important pieces of legislation that Congress has passed in decades to help the American worker, to help grow the American economy. This is profound change, and this is change that is going to put our country on the right path. For all those millions of men and women in America who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are struggling to get ahead, help is on the way. For all those businesses that are tied with one hand behind their back in this global economy, having a hard time com compete, help is on the way. I want to thank Chairman Kevin Brady. I want to thank all the men and women who made this possible. This has been a long work in progress. And what this achievement marks is a promise that this majority made that is a promise this majority is keeping. We said in 2016 that it would take real tax reform for families and businesses to get the American economy growing, and we were serious. And the American people placed their trust in us to do this work for them, and today we're making good on that promise. We're fulfilling that promise. And this promise being kept today is one of the most important things we could do to get the U.S. economy growing faster, to help people get bigger paychecks, to have a fairer tax system and to simplify the system so people can have more peace of mind. So Kevin said it the right way. On January 1, Americans are going to wake up with a new tax code. In February, they're going to see withholdings go down so they see bigger paychecks. And April 15th will be the last day they have to comply with the old bad system. This is a good day for America. This is a good day for workers. This is a great day for growth. And we're very excited about this moment. Thank you.